All right. So class, today we're going to be talking about the juvenile justice system. Uh, that is our topic and our essential question. Uh, it says, what is the role of the juvenile justice system? Please go ahead and have that written down. I believe most of you guys do. Today we're going to be doing some Cornell notes on the juvenile justice system. This is our standard. It says a student will explain how the Georgia court system treats juvenile offenders, okay? Uh, first, I want you to A, explain the difference between the delinquent behavior and unruly behavior and uh, the consequences of each. B, they want you to describe uh, the rights of juveniles when taken into custody. C, describe the juvenile justice system and emphasize the different jurisdictions, terminology, and steps in the juvenile justice process. And D, explain the seven delinquent behaviors that can subject juvenile offenders to the adult criminal process, how the, how the decision to transfer to adult court is made, and the possible consequences, okay? So everybody already has their Cornell notes. Guys, please be sure to Make sure that you're making your different connections as you take these Cornell notes. Please make your different connections. Started. And guys, by the end of this uh, lesson, I want you to make sure that you go ahead and answer that essential question, okay? All right, so. Here we go. So juvenile justice system. So on any given day, 2,500 children are locked up in Georgia because of criminal activity, okay? Any given day. Juveniles are citizens under the age of 17. Let's go ahead and grab that. <coughs> Juveniles are citizens under the age of 17. Okay? Juveniles are citizens under the age of 17. Juveniles have to follow all other federal, state, and local laws, but have a special status under the law. So you guys do know that juveniles, their consequences aren't going to be as bad as a regular adult. However, they still do have uh, a whole system set to basically penalize people who step out of their um, step out of their place. Okay, under this system. So it also says juvenile status can mean more lenient sentencing, but it also means that you have to obey some laws that adults don't, okay? So guys, you guys technically being juveniles have a couple of laws that you have to obey over uh, the adult system, okay? Can I give you one? Say so give it to Ms. Give it to So that one is basically uh, having to go to school, okay? You know, it's a, it is a state law that you guys are in school every day. Okay, is the state law. And after a while, there are some students where they weren't coming to school or whatever, they would send a social worker to your house to say, hey, what's going on? Okay, so there's a state law for you guys to go to school. Let's go ahead and keep on moving. So also, it says juvenile courts exist in every county and have three purposes, okay? So the first thing, and I want you guys to summarize this, okay? We'll go ahead and get this. First thing, uh, first purpose of the, and I want you guys to just put purpose. Okay, let's put purpose. Uh, the first purpose is to help protect the well-being of children. Okay, the juvenile justice system wants to help and pro help protect the well-being of children. That's the number one thing. Okay, number two, to make sure that any child coming under the jurisdiction of the court proceeds the care, protection, and control that they need, okay? And number three, to provide for children that are removed from their homes. So we see that the juvenile justice system is not just about um, penalizing kids, but they wanna make sure that you are in the correct environment in order for you to grow um, positively, okay? And remember, guys, whenever you finish, go ahead and just push your pencil down to where I can hear it. Yes. I want you guys to get all three. And we can summarize, too, so it's to make sure that any child. I mean, so just make sure, if you guys want to just say, um, to make sure that children receive the care, you say, receive the care, protection, and control that they need, that's just fine. So one, to protect the well-being of a child. Two, to make sure that these children are receiving the care and protection and control that they need. 
and three, to provide for children that are removed from their homes, okay? So I've learned in my living, um, for as long as I've been living, you don't even know, but I've learned that it's not always that a kid is just bad or they want to be mean and evil, but a couple of things happen to them. Um, they can be in a terrible home. You never know, they can have an abusive mother or father, things of that nature, okay? Uh, oh yeah, yes. And a lot of kids deal with rejection. Because they deal with rejection, a lot of times they get uh, act up and get hurt. That's probably got three more slides. I'm going to keep that brief. Also, guys, as you're doing these notes, please make sure that you're making your connections, okay? Please be making sure that you're making your connections. And those connections can be one word to help you remember, a packet of information, or it can be a question to help you remember, okay? But that's the purpose of putting your notes. types of offenses, okay? It says that there are two types of offenses. The first one is a status offense, okay? Everybody say status offense. Status offense. Okay? Status offense, offense says this, is one uh, where the juvenile commits a crime that is only a crime for a juvenile, okay? So, remember how I was saying there are only some different um, juvenile laws that you can break being a juvenile? Well, this is where the status offense comes in. You guys have different laws from adults, okay? So, some examples are this, truancy, okay? Two, disobeys caregivers, okay? Not listening to your parents. Three, also curfew violations. So let's say your folks, now watch this, I know y'all might not, y'all be like, what do I come home when I want to? Technically, by law, if your parents say you need to be home by nine o'clock, you need to be home by nine o'clock. If you are not, that's te you're technically breaking the law. That's a status offense, okay? It's in our law. Yes. Okay. So get first status offense. We know the status offense. In addition, and the main thing, you remember when I got when I told you guys that basically if you don't come to school, like you know, you will get in trouble for that as well. That is what truancy is called, okay? When you do, when you do not show up to school. So if you haven't been to school in like 20 days, you can end up, uh, you know, committing another status offense, okay? The second uh, type of offense is going to be a delinquent act, okay? A delinquent act is a crime committed by a child that would also be a crime if an adult did the same thing, okay? So a delinquent act is basically when you are on the same level as an adult, okay? For example. Rape, murder, and the big one, drugs. Now y'all know I always talk about, uh, you know, stay in school, don't do drugs, all that good stuff, okay? So, do not do drugs, you are breaking an offense, okay? And you're harming your body, you're harming your body. Your body. Also, children can be tried as an adult for serious crimes. So if you were to commit murder, if you were to do drugs and get caught, that is a delinquent act, okay? And you can be tried as an adult. You can't be tried as an adult. So status offense and delinquent act. Remember to put your pencils down whenever you finish. There's probably three more minutes. Okay. And remember, guys, make sure that you're making your connections, making those little side questions. Because we're going to want you to dig deeper into the information. 
and know it for yourself. Just remember guys, status offenses is truancy, disobeys care to give curfew violation. So for truancy, make sure that we show up on time to class. Like not when you have to class at school. Make sure you come to school. Don't be, don't say, hey, I'm gonna take like a five week vacation. Nah, right, your parents get in trouble and you get in trouble. Okay? And also, uh, don't uh, you know commit murder or do drugs. Let's go ahead and keep moving. All right. And this should be our last one. Almost. Okay, now this is huge, guys. So now we're actually going to be talking about the uh, legit juvenile justice process, okay? So I don't want you writing all this, but I do want you guys to summarize and bring it. So first, we're going to start off with the intake, okay? Everybody say intake. Intake. So a juvenile is turned over to an intake officer. So let's say you were not in school or whatever. You committed, uh, let's say you didn't come to school, you left for five weeks, okay? You committed truancy. So first they're going to do an intake, okay? Officers are going to come to where you are, and they're going to take you in, okay? Second, it's going, to, it's going to be the detention, okay? When a juvenile is detained, a probable cause hearing must be held within 72 hours. 72 hours is how long? Three days. Three days, great, three days. So first comes the intake, and I really don't want y'all to write all that, just Intake is kind of, we got that common sense. I mean, write it if you need to, but you pray intake. Second is going to be the detention, okay? When a juvenile is detained, a probable cause hearing must be held within 72 hours, three days. Third is going to be the formal hearing, okay? The formal hearing is going to have two parts. The objective, the objectatory hearing, which is going to be the actual trial, where they tell you what your offense was, and they're going to, you know, try you, bless you. And then two, it's going to be the dispositional hearing, which is where they're going to actually sentence you, okay? So first, you're gonna have the objectatory hearing where they're gonna have your actual trial. Second is where the sentencing is gonna come and the dispositional hearing, okay? Four, of course, is the sentencing. So you'll find out what your sentence is. A lot of times you might have like, they could say probation or things of that nature. And then five is gonna be appeals, okay? And we talked about this yesterday. What always has to come before you go to the appellate court? The trial, you have to have your trial first, okay? Trial court, but can anybody tell me what is the highest state, uh, highest court? Supreme court. Supreme the Supreme court. court, good, okay. So we know the highest uh, court is going to be the Supreme Court. So first we got the trial court, then the appellate court, then the Supreme Court, okay. If it goes that, if it goes any higher, but you only go to the appellate court if you want to appeal your case for a different verdict, okay. And guys, we might have one more slide, and after this, guys, we're going to move into another activity. Well, you guys are going to be reading about a juvenile case, okay? So as you read this juvenile case, I want you guys to underline the different uh, parts of the, uh, the different steps in the juvenile justice process, okay? And you're going to see what I mean in just a second. Good, we got people making their connections. guys doing a great job. Great. Great, great. So after you get that, as a matter of fact, I'm going to start passing out your next activity. Go ahead and start looking over it. I'm going to put the actual directions on the board. You guys, you can still be making your connections. Okay. Next. Yeah. What I want you to do next. Now we're going to go ahead and do our activity, but we're going to actually going to be using. Jennifer, are you good? No. What's wrong? Okay. All right. Sure. All right. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, we're yeah, we don't need that session. All right, guys. So, this is what we're gonna do now. Let me show you guys the directions real quick, and then we're gonna go ahead and get started. I will allow you guys to collaborate. We will be collaborating. So, okay, there we go. So, this is what I want you guys to do. Everybody, go ahead and pick up this sheet that I've just put on your desk, or pick up this sheet. Okay.